Crossrail is a digital railway. It's fairly advanced in its application of technology. Just about everything in the railway has a computer associated with it. That then means all these computers somehow have to be connected to something. You've got building management systems, you've got railway control systems. Every sensor has to connect up to some operator somewhere. And all of that requires software and complex integration activities. And that software is what controls how fast the train goes, how quickly it can break, where it goes, whether it can go somewhere or not. When you stand on a platform, it tells you whether the next train's coming in the platform and when. Not only do you have manual control of the railway, but it also gives you a lot of automated control. So for example, in a disrupted scenario, when you're running 24 trains per hour and there's a train broken down in a tunnel, you can recover the service a lot quicker because you've got a drop-down menu that just tells you, train broken down, recover. You click on that and the system will automatically give you a menu of things that you should do to recover the service in the most efficient way. We have three different signaling systems on this train, but the driver has one display. And so if you were driving on the Great Eastern, you're under TPWS control, you look at the same display, and it would look like any other TPWS display on any other train. When you move into the central section, that display automatically changes to where it's showing you what you would see on a CBTC system, which is an automated signaling system. It would tell you how far you can go, how fast you can drive, etc. It gives drivers those cues. When you come out the other side and you go into ETCS, it flicks to an ETCS screen. So it would be exactly like you would be on an ETCS screen. That is unique anywhere in the world. And so we've got some very novel applications of very advanced signaling system having to work together. This causes quite a lot of complexity on the project. The CBTC system that is applied in the central section today is fundamentally an automated signaling system. But our railway runs from Reading to Shenfield. And it interruns with a lot of other trains. And in fact, the outer sections don't have CBTC on them. Now, the fundamental of an automated signaling system is continuous communication between the train and infrastructure. The signaling system needs to know which train is going, how fast, where exactly is it, and how many people, etc., are on it. So it knows how fast it can break if it needs to break, etc. Once you get out of the central section, we're running other trains on there. So we're interrunning with other trains that don't have our signaling system on it. So our signaling system doesn't know where that other train is, how fast it's going, how quickly it can break, etc. And if we don't know that, then we as a signaling system would work based on what we know. So in the simplest signaling system, if you don't know something, you would just stop. So you wouldn't have an operating railway. So you'd have to change that, which means you'd have to re-signal the Great Western and the Great Eastern with CBTC and fit every train that runs on there with the same signaling system. So that's quite a complicated and big project. Chippenham is our direct contracted part of Siemens, and they effectively integrate the whole signaling system before it's delivered to the railway. So they would have all the labs. They would specify exactly what they want. So they're effectively buying the different parts of the system from different parts of Siemens, and they put it together like an assembly plant, if you will, in Chippenham. They put it into a lab, and that lab simulates what it would be like on a railway. And then they test it. And once they're satisfied that it's met the requirements, they then deploy it back onto the railway. So it's really important for us at every stage of the project to have labs that allow them to test as much as possible what they're developing way before they go to the next stage. As soon as we finish the testing in the next month or so, we will then upgrade the railway to the next version of software. And we're actually committing now as a project to use the next version of software to go into trial running. Because whilst the first version is good enough to go into trial running, we have enough time to get something better that would make trial running a lot more efficient and beneficial. So that's what we're doing now. I think the novelty of the system and the fact that these systems have never worked together before has caused quite a lot of the integration activity. Our transition testing is all about interrelationship between systems and timing because the train's moving. Everything's got to happen all when it's supposed to happen. If any one system is late in any way, 
it will stop the train. It'll disrupt the service. So those aspects of testing are what you pretty much have to do on the railway. Because as much as you do it in the lab, no one's going to approve you to run on the railway that will disrupt the rest of the, the network without knowing it'll run consistently every time. There's some things you don't compromise in. Safety is one of those. So we have to make sure that whatever we've introduced into service is safe. One of the things that we've done in Crossrail is that we've taken a staged approach to introducing the railway. If you ride to work from Shenfield, for example, you can ride one of our Crossrail trains. These days, if you ride to Reading, you should be able to ride a Crossrail train. We're doing it in stages, and each of those stages proves an aspect of the railway in some way, shape, or form. Reduces the risk for the end-to-end -end journey. So when we do open the central section to run through, the only elements of the railway that we're actually trying to prove would be what happens in the central section and perhaps at the fringes, rather than end-to-end. -end. So that's what we're doing. So some aspects of the railway are already in service but we do need to make sure that it will run consistently and safely.